Hey there, what's going on? Kate McShay here. And if you've ever been curious about how to actually grow your network marketing business in an authentic way, and maybe you've even heard of the term attraction marketing, but you're not really sure how to leverage it or how to utilize it, then make sure that you stay tuned throughout this video training that I'm gonna be doing with my special guest, who is my partner and also our chief marketing officer here at attractionmarketing.com. I've got a special guest, Fernie Ceballos here. Fernie, how you doing? Good, how you doing? I just wanna clarify partner, not spouse, partner as yes. in business partner. <laughs> yes, not my <laughs> spouse. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> Not my spouse, but there, an amazing there, business partner. <laughs> there's another good looking bearded guy that is the spouse. Yes, exactly. Oh man, this is going to be fun. Oh, Fernie, how you doing? I'm happy to have you here with us today. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here, Kate. Yeah, awesome. All right. Well, here, let's do this because I know if you're watching, you're curious about growing your network marketing business. You're curious about building online. You're curious about helping your team build online too. And you're curious about doing it in an authentic way. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. We've been getting a lot of questions from our subscribers recently on like what are the best attraction marketing tips to grow and build your network marketing business. So I brought Fernie on so that you can actually get a chance to get to know Fernie and hear some insight from the man who really helped develop attraction marketing. It's who I learned it from. And now I have the privilege of being able to be partnered up with him and with Tim Irwin and Matt Crystal. And so it's an honor for me to be able to interview Fernie so you guys can get a sneak peek into, you know, what, how he started, but then how to maximize attraction marketing to work for you. So Fernie, before I get into my first question, what I want to just make sure that any of you that are watching here, make sure the first thing that you do is that you click that subscribe button, whether it's above me, whether it's below, whether it's inside of the description, make sure that you tap that subscription button so that you get updates on any of our trainings, any new videos that come out, because what we're all about is helping you learn how to build and grow your network marketing business, leveraging attraction marketing so that you can build it in an authentic way that makes you happy so that you can build a business that you love and that you can live the life that you wanna live with more freedom, okay? So make sure that you hit that subscribe button and comment in so that we know the feedback that you've gotten from this specific training. We always look at the comments and we wanna make sure that we serve you guys as best as we can. Okay, so I'm gonna hop in here because this is a Q&A and I want you guys to get a chance to get to know Fernie a little bit better. So Fernie, can you share a little bit about your story, um, how you got started? Um, Cause I think that a lot of people will get a lot of value from it. Yeah, absolutely. And so I've been in <clears throat> network marketing for 15 years. And so I've been in the space, uh, I started off well, before that, I was an engineer, aerospace engineer. I went to MIT to get my uh, computer science and electrical engineering degree, uh, USC grad school. And uh, essentially, you know, I was sold a dream through traditional education, through being a good student and getting good grades and all that. Um, I was sold a dream and I had high expectations, especially going to a school as prestigious as MIT. And they tell you all day long, like you're set for life, like you're gonna conquer the world, you're gonna do so many great things. And then when I actually went to go work at a job, it was very deflating, it wasn't what I expected. And that got me on the path towards seeking something else, an alternative, something that would get me out of being at a job because I just felt like I was, I needed to do something more meaningful than just a nine to five and working on on you know even though it sounds cool to say working on top secret programs for the government it you know it's mostly paperwork and it's not very fun and so uh i started seeking and i found network marketing through a friend from grad school who invited me to a meeting uh all the people at the meeting were engineers in fact one of them was like a caltech triple major genius guy who uh but then I, and i'm thinking we're gonna do something related to starting some sort of company in the Silicon Valley space or something like that. And then he starts drawing circles, you know, and and uh, I was like, is this one of those pyramid things? Like, I had no idea. And, um, you know, I didn't like anything about network marketing. I didn't like the, the, uh, the strategy for building network marketing that was being taught, make a list of 100 friends and family, all that stuff. But the reason I ended up joining, the reason I ended up saying yes after about two weeks of them calling and me ignoring their calls um, was because no one had offered me an alternative to what I wanted to get out of. 
I hated so much. I, I wouldn't say I was hated, but I was unfulfilled so much by what I was doing. And I had such high expectations built for my life uh, as a result of all the ed academic training I went through that network marketing, even a little, if the probability was tiny that it can offer me that fulfillment of having a life of impact, then, then that was the only option I had. Even if the probability was low, according to uh, what I thought at the time. And so I, I called, finally called, returned their calls and uh, ended up signing up. And I got started network marketing for nine months. I did it old school, meaning home parties, home meetings, one-on-ones, making a list of people, uh, prospecting my friends and family, all that stuff. And I was pretty good at it. You know, I, 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 was, I was pretty good at it, not because I had any special skills, it's because I was motivated. I was motivated to make a change in my life. But as time went on, as that, that motivation started to wane because of the strategy that I started just feeling more and more inauthentic with the strategy that was deploying. Um, I was, you know, basically living a life of viewing people like a potential prospect, a target instead of a person. And, and, and so that was just incongruent with who I was, even whether it, every party or get together, or even if I was at a bar, like with friends, like I was viewing people through the lens of my network marketing business, which is just something I did not want to do anymore, but I did it anyway. I, you know, overcame my ethical issues with operating in that way and inauthentic issues with operating in that way, because that's what I was told was the path for financial freedom and to get results. And I was pretty good at it. Um, but then I discovered attraction marketing at a point where I was pretty much saying, you know what, this is not worth it. It's not worth my integrity. It's not worth operating in this inauthentic way. Um, you know, making a list of a hundred for the sake of building my business was like, well, where's the context for helping people? Like, I'm just, I'm just making a list of people so I can build my business and prospect them. And with no regard for like, what am I actually doing to help these people? And, and so, uh, so long story short, you know, I ended up finding attraction marketing. I found a website that was owned by, uh, a, a guy named Mike and a guy named Tim, who's now my business partner. Tim's my business partner, uh, here at attraction marketing. And, uh, he, they had, they basically offered me a different way, a different approach that was not only was more effective, but it was also more authentic and it didn't, it, it focused on reaching out and connecting with people that were already a high, had a high probability of being interested in what you had, whether it's your product or opportunity, their approach, you know, just had a target market. So rather than just talking to everybody, focus your efforts on the people that are, that have high, high, a high probability of actually being interested in what you have and then use actual marketing, online marketing and advertising strategies to connect with those people, reach out and get them to take an interest in what you have and have them request a conversation or more information from you. So it was a completely different approach. And it comes to, I come to find out that this is actually how just businesses operate. You know, in general, businesses advertise in general businesses, get a message out there that draws their target market to them. And therefore, when they have the conversation with that target market, uh, the, that target market already is predispositioned to be interested in what you have because they likely have a problem or a need that they need to resolve that what you have can help them with. It's as if I had seen an ad uh, somewhere on the internet when I was hating my job and, and sitting at work browsing social media when I shouldn't have been browsing social media, uh, like a lot of people do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's on an ad that says, are you sick of, of sitting in a cubicle working at a job you don't like? Well, check this out. Like if I saw that ad, I'd be like, he's talking to me. I'm going to, I'm going to reach out and see what, <laughs> what's going on here. And so that's the, the gist of, of what I discovered back in, um, about nine months into building my business. And within two years of finding this new way of building my business, uh, I was able to quit my job, leave uh, um, a high paying engineering income. And uh, and then, you know, within four years, build a seven figure income, uh, build a six figure network marketing business. But I also beyond that, I ended up building a, a business that 
started training people in person at live events on how to do attraction marketing. And, uh, you know, a few years after that, I partnered with uh, my original mentor, Tim, to start this incredible company, attractionmarketing.com. And now we're partnered with, you know, Kate, who was one of our students uh, after I had partnered with Tim. And it's been, uh, it's been a pretty cool journey where I was at the beginning, the beginning of this attraction marketing movement. And I've just seen how it's evolved and how it's adapted. But fundamentally, the foundation of attraction marketing is about authenticity and talking to people that already would be interested in what you have. Therefore, that conversation will, by its nature, be more authentic. I love that. And I want to I want to um, capture a couple of things that you said, because I bet you that they're like, as you're listening, drop inside the comments, you know, any takeaways that you got from Fernie's journey and, and some of the things for me were just the lack of fulfillment. How many people come into this industry and into this profession really just due to not being fulfilled in their either career that they currently have or just in life in general like they see something different for themselves i know that's how come andrew my actual husband not my partner <laughs> um how andrew and i got involved because it was like you know, I was a teacher, I loved teaching, but I was getting to the point of where it just didn't align with where I wanted my life to go. I didn't feel as fulfilled. I wanted a different kind of freedom. I wanted a different kind of life. And I think so many people get into this profession, even if like, and think about you, an MIT grad, like you were doing some really, really crazy stuff that maybe, you know, they can hop into our group at some point and maybe you can share some secrets on what you were doing. I know you've shared it before, um, yeah. but not for this training, but like you were doing some really cool stuff, but yet it still just wasn't like in your core exactly what you wanted your life to be like. And I know that so many people can relate to that. So I just appreciate you sharing that part. And I think the second part that was a big takeaway for me on what you just shared was just the difference between how so many people are brought into this space thinking that they have to talk to everybody. Not that like that's just best practice, but it's almost this pressure of like needing to have to talk to everyone. Whereas with attraction marketing, and this is where I'd love for you to just kind of explain a little bit of the difference for somebody, maybe who's new who's coming in and, you know, searching online for this and they pop up on this video, is that like you actually have an opportunity to bring in and talk to the kind of people that would be most likely to either become a builder with you or become like a customer consumer or product user of yours. Um, and I just love that because I think, I know for me personally, that's what got me involved in attraction marketing is that I didn't want to have to go and connect with every single person. I didn't want to have to go connect with, you know, my family members and friends again. I didn't want, and I didn't have anybody else that I could really connect with outside of the people I already knew. Um, and so Fernie, could you kind of share almost like what, what you were talking about on, cause I think this is new for a lot of people that not everybody is your prospect and how, like, what is the difference between going and intentionally like attracting somebody who would be the highest likelihood to want what you have versus going and connecting with Aunt Sally or going connecting with Uncle Vinny again <laughs> for the third time because you've got a promotion coming up or something like that. Yeah. So, you know, I think the, this little conversation here around, you know, going after everybody versus, yeah. uh, you know, going after certain people is just a business term that is referred to as target market. So if we're going to talk about network marketing as a business, then we need to treat it like a business and every business has a target market. And, and so, so that's, that's what the idea is rooted in going after everybody. You don't know what their problems are. You don't know what their, you know, pains, desires, uh, motivations. You don't know what, what fulfills them. You have to talk to every single person and just figure what that is, what that is, well, what, 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 that, what that's going to be for each individual person. It's going to be different, uh, for each individual person, their desires, their goals, what they hate, what they like, uh, what they want. All that is going to be different if you're if you're talking to a bunch of random people. Hmm. But if you find a way online to connect with people that are very likely to have similar problems and your solution, whether it's your network marketing opportunity, or your product um, is 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 in alignment with their problems and desires, 
uh, the things they want in their life, then very likely those conversations will be productive. And, and so, so for, you know, I'll give you an example. And when I said advertising online, advertising does not have to be where you pay money for advertising. It can be, and there's, we, I've certainly done that a lot of that. And we do a lot of that in our company, but advertising uh, can also come in the form of just networking network in, in, in communities where with people that are like-minded that actually want to talk to you because they want to talk to you because they likely have a problem that you might be interested in helping them resolve. And, but the point, the, the thing here is that you don't want to just go into those communities and start prospecting because now you're just defaulting back to that inauthentic way of being. You want to just connect with people. You want to make friends. You want, you want to just build a war market, essentially. If you want to call, if you want to have some sort of agenda in this, in, in doing this, well, then have your agenda just basically build your war market. And what does your war market mean? Build your friends, make friends, mm -hmm. create relationships. And if you guess what, if you're in the fitness world and you have a solution related to helping people get healthier or fit and you're ne networking with people that are in the process of trying to figure out how to become healthier or more fit, then just by the need, just by you being yourself and connect building relationships and getting to know somebody, well, the likelihood that something will come up in that conversation where you where you can go, you know what? I actually help help people do X, Y, and Z. Is that something you'd be interested in doing? Is a very natural thing to do. And the likelihood of them saying that they have a particular challenge or desire that matches what you can do for them only comes as a result of having a target market, being connected with people that already uh, already guess have an interest in the arena that you're operating in and so that's and and that doesn't mean every single person you talk to is going to be a fit for what you have right uh you have to really approach this networking in a way where you're building authentic relationships you have an interest in the people you're talking to whether or not they ever become a customer or or a rep in your business these are just valuable connections and you might just end up making some great friends uh, in the process, maybe, maybe if you're single, you might meet a spouse, somebody with a similar, <laughs> you might, you might find somebody with a similar interest that you connect with on a personal level or, or, or whatever that might be. And that's the beauty of attraction marketing is you get to network and connect with people that already are similar to you, that are to have similar interest and a subset of those folks might take an interest in what you have and the way that relationship evolves, um, it allows you to build your warm market really big with people that are not your just your current friends or family, but with new friends that are like-minded that may, act, may have an interest in what you have. And if the opportunity arises where you say, hey, I think I might have something that can help you. It's a very genuine, I think I have something that can help you. It's not you trying to convince Uncle Vinny or Uncle Bob uh, with this new promotion that this is going to work for them when they're really not interested. There's no convincing in attraction marketing. And, and so that's how it starts. And if you want to amp it up and, and scale it and, and do it at a high level, well, that's where you get to a level where you can maybe now advertise and, and leverage some of the incredible resources online that'll help you to just, you know, draw even more people to you. I love this. Um, and it's so important because it's like whether you're new and you're just starting out and you're coming across this video and this has become an aha moment for you that there are people out there that actually are a great fit for your product or a great fit to actually and they want a plan B or they want a side hustle or they want this to actually become what they do full time without necessarily having to have to work full time and they want to have a way of doing it authentically like that's the cool part of what really focusing in and honing in on like what a target market is and treating i love what you said about treating if it's a network marketing business we have to treat it like a business and that's what we do here at attractionmarketing.com is we help you actually 
actually learn and discover how to do that. Because, you know, for most people, when they come on and they've been advised to connect with their family members and friends, those are the people that they know. So they're already warm to them. And so that's the recommendation, right? But doing this takes a little bit more skill and takes a little bit more focus. But once you figure it out and you actually just start rinse and repeating this and build new friends, right? Build new relationships, it starts to become really fun. Which by the way, if you're like, how do I do this? Like, what's the formula? How do I actually get to know and dig deeper into like identifying my own target market? Cause you may be asking yourself that, like, I don't know how to do that. Then drop down into the description. There's a link there where you can get our most popular resource, our attraction marketing formula ebook at a steep discount so that you can actually start diving into our four step process on how attraction marketing works for you. Okay. And how like how to begin the elements of attracting in the ideal target market, your ideal prospect that you want to have. So make sure that you drop down inside of the description, grab that link and head on over and get our attraction marketing formula ebook. Um, as we continue on with this interview, which Fernie, one thing I wanted to ask you, because this comes up a lot is, you know, I want to recruit more people. Like I know bringing in builders is important. I know, you know, and like recruiting people is critical, but we talk about, we don't talk about recruiting. We talk about enrollment. Um, mm -hmm. Can you explain the difference for somebody that's here that's been told like in order for your business to thrive and be successful, you have to recruit and you have to recruit like crazy. And it's gotta be like the full-time thing that you focus in on. Can you share the difference in the perspective of um, enrollment versus recruitment. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I view recruitment as uh, a couple things. One, the way recruiting is described, it's like you're you're again prospecting. When you when you're prospecting, you're viewing people as prospects. It's like prospecting. I view people as prospects. Therefore, it already starts in an inauthentic way. That conversation, that relationship, where it's like I'm talking to you because I I want something for me. As opposed to, I want to see if I, I want to explore the possibility of being able to help you in any way. Maybe there's no way I can help you. It's like, so so recruitment starts with the prospecting and then there's the convincing and the selling. Mm. And it, and it's almost like anytime you hear recruitment, um, I think of convincing. I think mm. of trying to sway or use some sort of sales tactics or NLP or something to, to convince people that what you have, they should buy. Whereas for me, enrollment, uh, enrollment is an effortless enrollment is, um, one listening to asking, asking questions that are curiosity based. You want to know more about them. And the more questions you ask, the more someone will share what they desire and what they need and what they might need help with or what their problems are. And then when you simply ask them, well, would you be interested in exploring something that can help you in X, Y, and Z that you just mentioned? Then they're like, yeah. And then when they like notice my eyes, they go, yeah, they, their eyes open up because, you know, when you spend time listening to people and get to know people and it's genuine and authentic, they open up and share what's really going on without any like, uh, them being guarded because they think you're you're trying to convince them or sell them something and and so and then when you pre, when you share with them what you have they just go okay yeah that sounds good and then they enroll there's no objection handling there's no uh there there's none of the tricks or hard closing or any of that stuff that's happening yeah. here because by you asking questions you know, and there's a there's a process we use for asking questions. How do you ask questions so that you get down to what people, you know, get down to the truth and, and what people really want out of their life? Their answers, what they tell you is what creates the motivation for them to be interested in what you have. Therefore, the only part you're really involved in in moving them along is ask them if they're interested. And when they go, yeah. The enrollment follows and that's how that's the for me that's what enrollment means it's like basically you're just being curious about people asking them questions being present listening to what they share and if you if you based on what they share if you see there's an opportunity for you to help them you invite them and they enroll and that's pretty much fundamentally what enrollment is 
uh, in general, if you if you are in the personal development space, you'll hear enrollment a lot, or you hear something called an enrollment conversation, where basically it's a conversation where somebody shares with you the vision they they want for their life and what is currently getting in the way of them achieving that vision for their life. And you present for them an opportunity for them to potentially achieve that vision or goal. That's what enrollment conversation, if you are in personal development circles or if you've done any, anything like that, you'll hear enrollment a lot. Let's enroll this person. Let's enroll this person in, in seeing what, what might be you know, possible for them. Mm. That's really what you're doing here. It's not like you're not, you don't need sales training to have an enrollment conversation. You really just need to know what questions to ask. Um, and most importantly, be present and curious mm -hmm. with the person you're talking to. And then the enrollment becomes effortless. Yes. And this is like, this is one of the fundamental things that I truly believe we do differently than anybody else um, because it comes from a place of service. Right. And it comes from a place of actually listening to the person without the agenda of, well, what I ultimately want is for them to, you know, buy my product or join my team or, you know, like what I want them to do. And the interesting thing is that when you come from that place of enrollment service, being the advisor for that person, like advising them based on what they, you know, on questions that you ask. And again, we have like a whole process on how we do that and how we um, help our students do that. But that's when ultimately the end game becomes they're either going to get it or they're not. And the powerful part is that with enrollment, there are some people that you may just be like, yeah, you know what? Maybe this isn't a fit for you. And isn't it powerful to come from a place of that kind of power and influence where you can say like, actually, I don't know if you're a fit to build and grow an opportunity like this, or let's stay in touch, but here are a couple of things that I recommend. And that's a different, that was the difference maker for me, was like, I no longer had to have that agenda and that end game that it had to be a sale or it had to be somebody coming and joining. Instead, it was like, well, let's see if this is actually gonna be something that's beneficial for them. And so I just really appreciate you sharing your perspective on the differences, because I know it's like life-changing for our students. Um, once they do it, once they practice it and they take action with it, which is awesome. Well the, well, the beautiful thing is that if all you're asking, say, if you have a team and you're asking your distributors, you're training your distributors, all you're asking them to do is ask questions and listening to people. Right. You're not asking them to talk about how much money they're making or yep. the incredible results that they're getting, or like, you're not asking them to fake it till you make it. You're simply asking them and you yourself are just asking questions. And that's what results in the duplication in that this process is duplicatable because it doesn't have any of the authentic, inauthentic things and slimy, weird things that traditional prospecting and network marketing has. That's really what stops people. What stops people is they just simply don't want to build the business the way you're telling them to build it. Therefore, they quit and you, have, you don't have duplication. But if you tell them, if you give them an easy approach that is authentic to them and all it requires them to do is ask questions and listen to people to start with, then they're more likely to do it because there's no resistance. You mean, all I gotta do is just connect with people who are in a target market where they might already be interested in what I have hmm. and just get to know them a little bit. That's really it. It's like, yeah, that's it. Like that's the beginning. They're more likely to do something that doesn't conflict with their ethics or morals and that is, easy for them to understand that's what creates a duplication that's the magic that kind of lights the fire the reason your team doesn't duplicate is they fundamentally don't they hate the process of building just as much as you do probably <laughs> and, and isn't that interesting that it's almost like they can sense it and they can sense your discomfort in continuing to want to grow and build that way and it doesn't have to be that way which mm -hmm. is really awesome and that's what we teach and by the way, if this is something that you really want to dig deeper into, because now you're seeing there's like an attraction piece to it. There's a part where like people have to really understand 
you know, and build rapport with you and you have to build rapport with others. And then you want to enroll people versus recruit, but then also create duplication, then make sure that you click the link down below this video so that you have the ability to be able to grab our attraction marketing formula ebook. It's our best resource that'll get you kickstarted inside of the fundamentals and the foundations of what we've been talking about here today. Now, Fernie, this has been an absolutely awesome um, Q&A interview. Um, and I want to, I want for you, what, what do you think would be your, you know, your last thing that you want, would want to share to somebody who's watching, whether they're brand new and they're just coming online because they joined like their company and they're super excited. And so it's going to be a twofold question for somebody who's brand new is coming in and they're searching online, like how to grow my network marketing business. Right. And they're just hungry. They're hungry for information or are hungry for building in the authentic way. What would you advise them? And then what would you advise the leader? Maybe the leader who already has gained some traction and some growth, but they've plateaued and they're considering starting to leverage attraction marketing, but they kind of have that fear like you just talked about of like, well, this is new to me and how do I teach this to my team? What would you advise like both people? Cause I know there's going to be both of those kind of people watching. Yeah, for the new person, I mean, one, the fact that you're watching this and taking an interest in this, that you've listened to your your heart and your gut and that, hey, the way I'm being, I'm being asked to build, it just doesn't feel right. Well, first of all, listen to that um, and then get curious about what education there is on how to do it a different way. And, you know, attractionmarketing.com, this company is is the source of this information. This is where it all started. The movement started 15 years ago here. And since then, our students have have spread, you know, the, the gospel, so to speak, about attraction marketing. And it's taken on different forms. And and uh, but I also want to make you aware that there's certain things being called attraction marketing that are not, mm. you know, if you're at being asked to cold message people inauthentically, it's not attraction marketing. If you're being asked to spam, it's not attraction marketing. If you're being asked to uh, brought, you know, send scripts to 100 people a day, it's not attraction marketing. That's just a different version of what, the, what all the stuff we just talked about that doesn't work and is inauthentic. So just because they call it attraction marketing doesn't make it attraction marketing. If you want to know what attraction marketing is, then do as Kate says and, you know, check out the link in the description. So you can actually learn, uh, read a book that I wrote um, and that defines what attraction marketing is, what it looks like. And then you can join our community to, to get to know other people that are also doing attraction marketing. Um, if you're a leader and you've plateaued, well, you know, one of two things might have happened. You might have had great momentum and and you maybe are already following a similar philosophy to what we're talking about, but then you plateaued. Well, now you're the the reason most likely you plateaued is because the systems you're using for supporting your team have maxed out or perhaps you're not developing leadership, you know, people that can support and lead your team at the rate that you need to. Therefore, a lot too much of it is on your plate. Therefore, the growth of your organization is limited by your time because there's not a lot of leadership. So it's either a leadership issue or a systems issue. And so that's where I would, um, again, you can check out the link in the description and schedule a call and you can talk to somebody in our community, in our company that might be able to, you know, go deeper with you, um, to understand what, what's really going on, but there it's either a leadership issue or a systems issue because systems allow you to make the same impact. 50, 100 levels deep in your organization that you're able to have frontline because those people deep in your organization are getting the same training. Whereas if you're counting on other people to pass the word along, it becomes the telephone game and it becomes corrupted. And now there's no consistency in how everybody on your team is building. Um, the other thing for leaders is you might have just been working really hard and, and did it the old school way and really just, you know, made it work no matter what you had the grit you had the determination and you were able to lead your people to do the same thing to a certain level but again you plateaued because now your your leadership can't impact as many people your way of motivating people is not able to go too deep anymore in your team and therefore the people that are leading their teams below you maybe are not as effective at motivation as you are they're not effective as as, as leadership uh, in leadership as you are and, and what overcomes that 
is the strategy you're using. It doesn't, you know, traditional network marketing can work. And there's many, I know many people who have made it work, but it, it ultimately people will burn out. And if you wanna solve the burnout and attrition stuff, and maybe not have to work as hard to make the income that you're making, then perhaps consider starting to explore teaching a different approach that's gonna be more authentic that people actually wanna do. And, and you don't need to have people deep down line that are great motivators. You just need people that can teach a process to other people and, and, and pass it on. And that process, because it's authentic, uh, you're gonna have less resistance, therefore more activity, more production, more volume. So again, ultimately, if you wanna explore that as to how you might do that, then I think uh, checking out the link in the description and talking to somebody at our company to, to help you, you know, kind of diagnose your problem. But, you know, I really, I, I just said a lot of words that boil down to systems and leadership. Uh, but the third thing is authenticity of the process that you're teaching your people. At some point, if you're teaching the traditional stuff that focuses on me, 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 and not others, then uh, people will burn out. Even if they're productive, they will eventually burn out and they'll quit. Well, super powerful. I mean, just like this interview in itself, I picked up like 15 different things that anybody who's watching this training could take away. And hopefully for you, as you're watching, you've picked up something that just all of a sudden ignites your mind in a different way and causes you to look at your business differently, whether you're brand new or whether you're a leader and you wanna to get to that next level, no matter what, what Fernie has shared inside of this interview is absolute gold. So make sure that you're taking notes, but more important than anything, like Fernie recommended, drop down into the description and go to that link, grab our Attraction Marketing Formula ebook. And also like Fernie said, is that you, you will have an opportunity to actually talk with somebody on our team to diagnose where you're at and what might be the most helpful for you to get to where you wanna go. And honestly, to get there, like I always like to say to move further faster, because if you're trying to do it on your own and just watching a bunch of different videos and a bunch of different trainings, that can help, but we're all about success leaves clues and success loves speed. And that's what we do here at this company is we help people actually move further faster with traction marketing with our guidance. Um, so Fernie, thank you so much for coming and doing this interview with me today. I know our community loves you, our students love you, your mentorship is absolutely amazing and your leadership is absolutely amazing. So I thought it would be really, really powerful to bring you in, especially for this specific topic on attraction marketing tips. Uh, anything else you wanted to share, Fern, before we hop on off? I'm just really appreciative, you know, Kate, of you having uh, me here, but also appreciative of the incredible success that you've had since you got started. You were a second grade school teacher, came to one of our events and uh, discovered us for the first time. And I think you were the disapproving spouse, uh, you know, in that scenario. And I'm just, you know, so impressed with how, how far you've come mm. to now being a leader in our company, in our business, you know, not only, you know, creating incredible results, financial results for yourself, but now being in a position where you, in, you impact other lives and, and, um, and I'm just, you know, honored to have been your mentor and now I'm honored to be your partner. So thank you. And I thank everybody for listening. Awesome. Thank you, Fern. I really appreciate that. Honestly, right down to the heart. <laughs> um, and so for all of you, yes, let's do one of these. There we go. <laughs> for all of you that are watching, thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel so that you get an update on any time we have a new video that's being released. And outside of just dropping in the comments um, and grabbing our Attraction Marketing Formula ebook, drop in the comments and let us know what you got. Let us know your takeaways. It's really important to us that you share your insight on what value you got from these trainings because what you comment allows us to then create other trainings that are just as valuable for you. Um, and most important, if you have not gotten our Attraction Marketing Formula ebook just yet, make sure that you do that. It's a great place to not only get started, but understand the whole process of how it works. And so then you can figure out kind of where you're at on your journey and then what's gonna help you the most to leverage Attraction Marketing to enjoy your business, enjoy your life and find the kind of freedom you wanna find. All right, well, I think that's it, Fern. Take care, everybody, and we'll see you on our next training. Bye, everybody.